check out this amazing mess I'm about to show you, one that needs no introduction. Meet Chef Elise Harris, the self-proclaimed queen of Hell's Kitchen. She made quite the splash during her time on the show, but what happened after? Stick around and find out. You're looking at the woman herself flexing her transformation journey. Elise was undeniably skilled. She made it onto the show through a tough audition process, so you gotta give her that at least. But her talent in the kitchen wasn't the only thing that stood out. Remember when she refused to help her teammates with the risers during the All-Stars? Y'all are gonna have trouble getting that one up though, it's heavy. Well, that was nothing unusual for Elise. You see, she didn't play by the rules when it came to teamwork. And some of the antics she pulled, which landed her teammates in some hot water more times than not, actually ended up making her more popular. Post Hell's Kitchen, she branded herself as the diva chef. Now, before you start assuming things, let me clear the air here. Elise believes she served deliciousness in various assortments, D-I-V-A. Honestly, that's kind of a fun acronym. Now, whether her food was truly delicious is debatable, but her belief in her diva status was undeniable. Elise didn't win many friends during her time on the show, but she embraced being herself unapologetically. This was a value that she stuck to pretty much all the time, for better or for worse. I'm still the same Elise who really doesn't care what people think. It's okay, <laughs> you can hate me. Let me give you my two cents on this. There is a fine line between being self-confident and being arrogant. Like, being self-assured and staying true to what you believe in can be very good. Also, being independent and innovative are both really good traits to have. However, when it comes to arrogance, it goes a step further towards a much darker place since it involves an inflated sense of self-importance and a lack of consideration for others. People like that can often act in their own self-interest with no regard for who they may hurt along the way. So why did I get up on my high horse here? Because this is exactly the reason why nobody was happy to see Elise come back. She's here, I'm walking out. Bye. <laughs> come on guys, it's a no-brainer. After all, Elise had a history of sabotaging her teammates big time. For instance, in Season 9, when her team lost the Mommy and Me lunch service challenge, instead of owning up, she did this. I feel like Carrie ran around the kitchen today like a chicken with her head cut off. That's one way to play the blame game, Elise. Queen of Hell's Kitchen? More like the Queen of Deception if you ask me. I mean, she wasted absolutely no time in blaming poor Carrie Key. She pointed out that Carrie was running around the kitchen without a clear plan. However, Jamie Gregorich stepped in and revealed that the real issue was that Elise was constantly arguing with her. Why are you in my space? I'm not in Back space. Up. You're in my space. And everyone else on the team thought the very same thing. It's no secret that Carrie might have struggled a lot on the red team. Some even called her the weakest link, but I'll leave that for you to decide. However, Elise was petty enough to take things to a whole other level. Not only did she blow things way out of proportion, but she made a mountain out of a molehill. It was honestly like she had a personal vendetta against Carrie or something. Being tough is one thing, but being a bully is another thing entirely. That's not a good look, girl. Elise? Elise? Hello. I'm asking her, she will not give me a timeline. But hey, once a diva, always a diva, right? That being what she got up to after the filming wrapped. Turns out, these days, Elise is the mastermind behind her own venture called the Diva Chef. Talk about sticking to your guns, right? Through the Diva Chef, she's had the chance to combine her passion for fitness with her excellent culinary skills. And what's more, she also competed in the NPC Baltimore Class A Bikini Championship and was placed in first. You can tell that she was absolutely committed to the bit. According to her website, she's been making appearances on TV shows like Food Fighters, Après Ski, Pickler and Ben, and even the Hallmark Channel. Well, after getting a taste of the spotlight on Hell's Kitchen, no wonder she'd want to stay in it as long as possible. But bikini contests and bit roles aren't all that Elise is made of. Apparently, she's also hosting cooking demos both in person and online, and supposedly, they're all sold out. And of course, she's all over social media, sharing motivational workout posts and healthy recipes. Honestly, I wonder if people are actually buying into her positivity, considering her notorious attitude. So I can give you a winner's tip, be a team player or go down with the losing ship. Damn, Daily Blast Live's callout game is absolutely on point. I was reading some of the comments after her elimination on All Stars, and damn, you guys aren't too bad at roasting. Maybe you guys should start hosting your own Daily Blast Lives. Speaking of programs, Elise sure seems to have those in spades. 
So, do any of you want to sign up for Muscle Meals by Elise? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is a legit weight loss program to help people achieve their health goals. Honestly, that's pretty awesome. As you can see, the diva has some pretty grand aspirations. She wants her own cookware line, health-conscious food seasonings, fat-burning supplements, a book, and even her own show. Well, shoot for the moon, Elise. Shoot for the moon. And what's more, her personal life also seems to be looking up when she tied the knot with Chris Wims back in 2017. The couple exchanged their vows at the beautiful Pontemac Pinot Winery, and everything seemed to be going great. I was honestly really happy for them, but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to last. They filed for divorce very soon after. But unexpectedly, this terrible experience turned out to be a blessing in disguise for Elise. Who would have thought, right? Soon after, she found her true soulmate in Michael Harris and decided to marry him. According to her website, she's not only a devoted wife, but a proud mom of two adorable kids. Talking about her experience on season 17, Elise expressed her heartfelt gratitude to her supportive family, loving friends, and devoted fans. So many people eagerly tuned in to watch and cheer her on during the first ever all-star edition of Hell's Kitchen, and she's so grateful for that. She said that being chosen for this prestigious event was truly an honor and a privilege for her. Acknowledging that failure is a part of life, she vowed to never stop trying. While Elise talks a big motivational game, viewers were far from impressed by her attitude during the show. In the comments, many viewers called out her toxic behavior and questioned how authentic she really was. During her time on All Stars, Elise humorously referred to Hell's Kitchen as Hater's Kitchen. Wow, could you really believe the audacity on that woman? Behold, the reigning queen of Hell's Kitchen, the queen of deception. You know what? Go ahead and add the queen of irony to that list. Well, you definitely have to give her some credit for attempting to make light of the situation, but let's be honest, that joke definitely got a chilly reception. On a lighter note, Elise is definitely no stranger to breaking barriers, expectations, and even records. With a whopping 12 overall nominations, 7 in Season 9 and 5 in Season 17, including the intense Cook For Your Life challenge, she's undoubtedly the queen of nominations. I do see something in you. Take this oh and get back in line. But, 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 despite being the most nominated contestant in the history of the show, she managed to defy the odds and survive all 12 of them. However, that begs the question, did Elise overstay her welcome? Well, I think you guys made your opinion loud and clear, yes. But you guys seem to forget that she was rightly described by this contestant, who was a piece of work herself. It's way to bounce back after two challenges. Thank you, that's right, because I'm the bounce back queen. <laughs> that was crazy, right? I mean, seriously, I totally love the mockery. By the way, Robin Amadavar also has a cap embroidered with that moniker emblazoned on it, so she and we never forget it. Speaking of Robin, the Hell's Kitchen fan community seems to be divided over who is worse among the two, since an overwhelming number of people seem to think that Robin was way worse than Elise. But hey, there are plenty who consider both equally unlikable. What about you? Whose side are you on? Team Elise? Team Robin? Team, please just get both of them off of my screen right now? That aside, even though her attitude sucked completely, nobody could deny Elise's cooking skills. At least, I hope you're with me on this one. Though, speaking of Robin, she won the Food Network's Chopped, if you could believe it. I mean, she was talented, so I guess I'm not surprised. Recently speaking, she also took on the exciting role as the corporate chef for Future Foods, partnering with the brand to showcase the potential of POW's plant-based proteins. By the way, POW is an acronym for the people and our world. Her expertise in the kitchen proved invaluable as she worked closely with the sales and marketing team to build strong industry relationships and elevate the brand's presence across all platforms. She continues to lead the charge in POW's kitchen, where she's a master at developing new and innovative flavors. Listen to this. Her signature creations are delectable dishes like tikka masala, tacos al pastor, and Asian ginger sticky noodles, all featuring the wholesome goodness of POW's plant-based products. Vegan or not, it's definitely making me hungry. Anyway, does anyone remember this super awkward conversation? I'm the diva star. <laughs> I, I don't know why they kept trying so hard, but Elise here clearly looked uncomfortable. Speaking of which, there are a few viewers who deserve to have their internet access revoked. No, like seriously. What are these damn disgusting comments? Like, come on guys, would you say this in person? Some women feel empowered sharing explicit photos online. 
It's their way of embracing their femininity and feeling confident. But the problem is, once those photos are out there, some guys start using them as an excuse to degrade and objectify women. That's the downside of social media after all. They're open to everyone and pretty easy to use. So what may have started as a positive expression can quickly turn into something very negative with guys treating these women's content as, well, you know. That's the male gaze on full display right there. Okay, whew, ran over, back to the show. Where were we? Oh uh, yeah, here. I don't think I deserve to be up here. The key word was the three weakest chefs. What was with her constantly breaking into tears? Oh boy, I feel a rant coming on again. Expressing emotions and being vulnerable is a natural part of being human. Crying or showing vulnerability doesn't automatically mean that you're trying to manipulate someone or gain their support. With that being said, Elise has been accused of being a master manipulator by contestants like Josh. But was this the case here? What do you think? Cause honestly, I don't disagree that she cried way too often. For example, she broke into tears when the winner of All Stars was announced. Was it out of jealousy because she hated Michelle? Or was it a simply cathartic moment for her? I'll leave it up to you guys to figure that out. Now let's go from tears to laughter. The date night dinner service was absolutely hilarious. She was stuck on the appetizer station with Jennifer and from the get go, they were at each other's throats arguing over who should be leading. Who's in charge here? Me, chef. I'll do it. I'm, I'm very vocal, chef. I will take care of it. But it didn't stop there. Elise flat out refused to talk to Carrie. Yeah, if you thought we were done with this beef a couple minutes ago, you're mistaken. Elise, how are we thinking on the pasta? I'm thinking that I'd rather head done pizza. There's no way she could lead a horse to walk. Chef Ramsay had to step in and remind them to put their personal issues aside and focus on the service. You'd think that'd be a no-brainer, but apparently not for Elise. As the night went on, it was one disaster after another for her. She sent up a dish that was supposed to be vegetarian, but guess what? It still had a lobster in it. Now, that's a crucial mistake, and Chef Ramsay wasn't pleased to say the very least. One fucking vegetarian capellini, no lobster, just plain tomato sauce. Things got even worse when her oysters ended up overcooked. The famous chef had enough of her attitude and kicked her out of the kitchen. For all that we've been talking about the so-called Queen of Hell's Kitchen, we all know there's only one true king of the castle. Now, let's move on. Elisa's feuds are legendary. She agitated absolutely everyone, but this right here was especially painful to watch. I am calm, I'm just saying yeah, that. You're always talking back to me, you don't need to talk back to me. Talk about insubordination. During prep, Elise decided to show some quote-unquote appreciation to sous chef Andy by giving her a bit of attitude, and let's just say that sous chef Andy wasn't exactly thrilled. Andy straight up told Elise to cut it out and stop being a damn child. But we should know by now that Elise wasn't going to take this lying down. She kept talking back to sous chef Andy, completely disregarding the chain of command in the kitchen. I'm here, you're here. Get it straight. Hello? I heard you. In a kitchen brigade, the whole point is to have everyone on the same page and know their roles, and a clear and established hierarchy helps in communicating that. But Elise, for all of her skill, seems to have zero respect for that. She did the very same thing on Après Ski. Yep, and unsurprisingly, she was infamous on that show for insulting her superiors. She got fired on the show, and the other cast members seemed to be pretty relieved about it. As the operations manager at Gibbons Life in the luxury concierge business, professionalism is a crucial requirement for the job. However, Elise struggled when it came to maintaining a professional attitude. That attitude gets in the way of her responsibilities as a manager, despite her passion for the job. Ultimately, her lack of professionalism and inability to prioritize her duties led to her dismissal from the team. I really can't help but wonder if Elise is intentionally making herself the heel of every show she's on or if this is genuinely how she is in real life. Her behavior on screen, especially in shows like Hell's Kitchen, has earned her a reputation for being confrontational and difficult to work with. However, it leaves many curious about whether there's more to her personality beyond what we see on TV. If Elise truly intends to play the villain, it might seem like a smart move to embrace it. However, it's essential to note that there is a difference between being a badass and just plain bad. True badassery lies in being confident, assertive, and fearless while still treating others with respect and consideration. It's a fine line to walk on, but finding that balance can lead to genuine admiration and respect rather than coming off like a jerk. Has anyone ever had the chance to meet Elise personally? After all, she's got a ton of fitness and cooking events, right? 
I'd love to hear first-hand accounts of what she's like beyond the reality show persona. Sound off in the comments section down below. Back on TV though, her constant warnings to the red team, like this one, were pretty concerning. They just woke the sleeping giant. Watch out now. Anytime someone tried to communicate their thoughts, she took them very personally. To me, these threats suggested that she might escalate her aggressive behavior, which could further strain team dynamics. And we all know it did. Sure, a competition like Hell's Kitchen can bring out the best and the worst of people. But when someone consistently resorts to threats and bullying, it can really affect a team's morale. Really, nobody wants to work in an environment where they constantly feel attacked or belittled. It's good to be confident in your skills, but again, there's a fine line between healthy competition and outright hostility. Did Elise cross that line? What do you think? I mean, I obviously think so, but there are people out there who think this. The hot take of the century right there. You know, it's really easy for people to point fingers at reality show producers and claim that they intentionally made Elise look bad. But let's be real here, the producers might edit the footage for dramatic effect, but they can't just conjure up a whole new personality for someone. Sure, they might emphasize certain traits or create tension through editing, but they can't completely invent her behavior. Especially back then, before deepfakes and AI were a twinkle in the internet's eye. Elise was who she was, and the cameras just captured it all. Reality shows thrive on real personalities, even if they're not always flattering. That's why they call them reality shows after all. Besides, for someone who constantly accused others of backstabbing her, she sure showed no remorse when she almost took stabbing to a literal extreme. Oh, you almost stabbed Jennifer. Oops. Sorry. Later, Elise was so darn confident during the second Black Jacket Challenge in season 17, but she couldn't back it up with her performance. She was all about thriving under pressure and being the strongest chef on the red team. But when she presented her poached lobster tail with Parmesan rice asparagus, Chef Ramsay spotted a major, uh, oopsie. And that's the poop sack that you do not want to crunch on. Yeah, let's call it that. Ugh, there goes my appetite for dinner tonight. Chef Ramsay didn't hold back and let her know that even a tiny mistake like that can ruin the entire dish. He didn't even taste it and gave it right back to her. You could see the disappointment on Elise's face, which compounded even further when she lost the challenge to Michelle and Benjamin. Overconfidence? Meet Reality Check. She was struggling even during the final Black Jackets challenge, a performance that ultimately became her worst nightmare. Once again, she let her frustration get the best of her and started calling out her fellow contestants. She accused Robin of not doing anything remarkable and saying Jennifer wasn't a leader, which is some serious shade. But now, it was her turn to have her dish judged by Ramsay. Man, it had been a rough day for her. She served up a pan-seared filet mignon with a potato puree, mushroom duxelle, and rainbow chard. Chef Ramsay was pretty impressed with the sear on the meat, but let's not judge a book by its cover since it was nowhere near the medium rare she wanted it to be. Still, Chef Ramsay said that it tasted tender, so that's something. Oh, and also, those potatoes had a weird taste according to him. It's no surprise then that Elise got eliminated right after the judging. Ugh, bummer, right? Before she left, Ramsay gave her some props for her passion, even though her dish didn't quite make the cut. He was cool enough to let her keep her chef jacket and told her to keep her head held high. Honestly, that's such a nice gesture. During her exit interview, Elise didn't hold back. She argued that her dish was way better than some of the others that made it through. She was seriously disappointed about not getting a black jacket, and man, she felt the pressure got to her head in the end. Chef Ramsay didn't say much about her elimination, and she didn't even get the usual burning picture sequence. Tough day in the kitchen for sure. Anyway, these days, she's focusing on growing her business and flexing her gains. And it looks like she's successful in that department, with her followers saying that she definitely looks beautiful. Someone named Frankie even thinks that Versace should hire her as a model. <laughs> Elise on a runway? What, next to Gigi Hadid? Now, that would be a sight to behold. So that's the story of our favorite, or maybe least favorite, Hell's Kitchen diva. Hmm, did I miss anything big? Let me know in the comments section down below. And by the way, I got a lot more to share about Chef Ramsay, so don't forget to join me on my channel's Discord server for free. And guess what? I even have an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.